Okay, today I'm doing an upgrade to my Japanese carrier strike group in 1 350th scale. I don't have the actual carriers that they have, the Izimu class, uh, which will be carrying the F-35Bs, but I do have in 1 350th scale the Hayuga, and those two ships are the same fairly much as the two Izimu class. They're just smaller. Uh, you can see in the middle that that ship in the middle there is a flat top carrier. The Japanese for many years had destroyers that were helicopter carrying destroyers and for many years and including now as part of their agreement with us in terms of defense in the Western Pacific, they give us uh, anti-submarine warfare coverage. Of course, we cover ourselves, but they also provide additional coverage. And they built these two ships to replace the older uh, Hiranu and Shirani class destroyers that were about 7,000, 7,200 tons, and each one of them carried three helicopters. And the front end was a destroyer, like these other destroyers that you see, particularly this one here, the uh, Takanami class, and the one before it, the uh, class before it, the Murasami. But then in the back, they had a long uh, helicopter deck that could carry, at one time, three helicopters. So. They upgraded that significantly with these 20,000 ton ships that you can see have four aircraft landing spots. They could easily do five if they needed. And those ships can carry, uh, although they rarely do, they could carry up to 14 helicopters and they can store them in their deck. One thing you see on that carrier, and that is the Hayuga, they call them DDH, that's DDH-81 is they've got a nice hangar inside. Uh, however, they don't have any deck edge elevators and that hampers their ab ability to put larger uh, aircraft on board, although they have tested and put an Osprey down into this ship and carried Ospreys on them. And they have announced that they're buying Ospreys. They also just recently announced that they're carrying or going to buy 40 to 60 uh, Joint Strike Fighters and they're going to put them on the Izimu. The Izimu is about a 30,000 plus ton aircraft carrier that is 900 feet long, whereas these are about 625 to 40 feet long. So, and these uh, are not quite as wide as the Izimu carriers are either. The Izimu carrier can carry up to 24 aircraft. We figure they'll carry at least 20 uh, joint strike fighters. Here you see the uh, the escorts. This right here is the uh, Tago, uh, which they built. It is an absolute full bore Aegis destroyer. It's uh, equivalent to our flight 2A Burks. They're on the other uh, side mm -hmm. across the way. You see the Congo, which is equivalent to our flight 1 Burks. Uh, and the real difference is simply that that one doesn't have a hangar, has a place to land and fuel uh, helicopters, uh, but this one has the hangar, as you can see. And uh, it's big enough to carry their larger helicopters as well. Uh, we've got their best submarine out front, a Sorayu class. They have built, I believe to this point, 11 or 12 of those and plan to build 15 of them. They're very stealthy. We get in close on this. You can tell that it's uh, got the stealth qualities, not only in the blended contour, but in the tiles that it carries. This particular destroyer here uh, is called the Akazuki. Uh, no, excuse me. No, that's correct, the Akazuki. And they built four of those and then two add-ons, and so there are six of them. And they are really a Japanese dual-band radar 
Aegis ship. They have their own uh, battle management system on those that uh, will speak with and work completely with Aegis so they can do cooperative engagements. And those are very nice ships. Uh, they're built with a 30, uh, 32 cell uh, MK141 vertical launch system, principally to carry quad launched uh, Evolve Sea Sparrow missiles. So that gives them a good 50 mile range and a very decent uh, mid to coming into long range coverage. If they're a multi role ship, so they have uh, anti submarine warfare, uh, anti surface warfare. As you can see, of course, with three, a 350th scale, you can uh, really uh, see the um, detail a lot better. Now, I did just recently a 1 700th scale version of the Japanese carrier strike group with both of the larger carriers. So if you look that up on uh, YouTube, you'll see it, and it's, uh, it's impressive. It's just not 1 350th scale, and I'm eagerly awaiting the day that somebody comes out with a 1 350th scale version of that class. And the Ford class carriers and the Queen Elizabeth, and we can keep naming the ones they need to build for my model making purposes. But in the meantime, we do what we can. Uh, the Hayuga class I have, I have put, as you can tell, um, a small squadron of F-35s on it. They, they definitely would fit. They could carry six on there if they want. I doubt seriously that they will do so, though. They have the two Azimus that clearly were built to carry them and uh, and to carry a lot more. So there's a good 20 aircraft that they'll be carrying. And I hope that they finally will not only show the interest, but actually spend the money and build the EV-22, which is the Osprey AEW aircraft that was offered to the Royal Navy and they turned down, which I, I'll never understand. I, I'm sure they'll tell you it was a cost thing, but the relative cost of the difference between the Merlin Crow's Nest combination for AEW and the EV-22 is relatively small when you compare it to the, the carrier and its air wing, and that's what you're protecting. But I wanted to put these together to show you in one 350th scale uh, better what the Japanese carrier strike group will look like. I'm just using the smaller carrier uh, uh, to show it in this particular video. And I will replace the older video I have for the one 350th scale carrier strike group with this one. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, that Akazuki uh, destroyer, there's only one company that makes it and it's a resin model so it's more expensive than your plastic models but I think it was well worth it. It's very well built and a lot of detail came with it and uh, it was like buying a model with all of the available add-on packs with it because they all came with the resin uh, model itself. So there you have it. Here we have the Hayuga, which of course in the real uh, carrier strike group would either be the Izumu or the Kaga. You've got the Congo Aegis uh, ship uh, back there in the back. You've got a Takanami destroyer. It's about 6,800 tons. You've got the Atego uh, class, which they built to be basically their uh, Ticonderoga because it has additional space for command purposes to command the defense of any group that it is a part of. Um, it's about 10,500 plus tons. Then you've got the Akazuki, which is a very modern, very good ship. 
and then of course the Sorayu, that, that uh, AIP, which stands for Air Independent Propulsion, allows this uh, submarine, this boat, to travel underwater for very extended periods, and they can do it at about 25 knots underwater. So this is the Japanese, and I'm sure that everybody can figure out that them coming up with the the two aircraft carriers that they now have is their answer uh, to the Chinese large uh, naval modernization upgrade and growth that they're going through. They're building their third carrier and their carriers are 65,000 ton large carriers. They're every bit as large as the new Queen Elizabeth class, maybe a little smaller, but they're within 5,000 tons of them. So, hope you enjoyed it. We'll uh, hopefully get those other ships out and built at some point and be able to show you those. Until then, this is Jeff Head. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.